This video is brought to you by Mr. Black Cold Brew Coffee Liqueur. Today we're going to make an abiding classic, the White Russian. For this recipe, you're going to need a glass, a jigger, a bar spoon, and optionally, a mixing glass, a pitcher, and a whisk. The ingredients are vodka, coffee liqueur, and some sort of creamer. Sometimes there's a drink. I won't say a hero. But sometimes there's a drink. Well, it's the drink for its particular time and place. This has to be one of the laziest drinks in Los Angeles County, which would place it high in the running for laziest worldwide. It's coffee and cream, with a little reinforcement. It's easy on the palate. It's not a Gibson or an old fashioned where the fiery booze is front and center with nowhere to hide. Whether you serve it up or on the rocks, it's going to be chocolatey, milky, and familiar. That sweetness and familiarity was part of its original appeal. The exact origins of the drink are harder to pin down. Like a lot of its fellow famous drinks, the authorship of this one isn't very clear. There were certainly a lot of drinks that preceded it, all of which were in the same neighborhood. Some with familiar names like the Black Russian and the Alexander, and some less familiar ones like the Russian or the Brunette. Just like with the Negroni, where there were a lot of people putting similar drinks together around the same time, this one too took a particular alchemy of marketing and branding to bring it to the forefront of the public imagination. The drink started appearing in the mid-1960s, and it became well known in the 70s, but our story starts much earlier. After the Russian revolutions of 1917, the country broke out in civil war. It was the Bolsheviks, known as the Reds, versus the counter-revolutionary royalists, known as the Whites. After the White Army was defeated, the English-speaking world wanted to find a way to distinguish non-communist Russians from the communist ones. The term they would use for the next 60 years was White Russians. Although the drink was more likely named for the color of the cocktail rather than this cultural signifier, because by the time the White Russian drink was really popular, the White Russian classification was an outmoded term, and one that needed explanation. The use of the word Russian in this drink, and similarly in drinks like the Moscow Mule, is the same way that Scotch drinks are named after famous Scots, or why every mezcal drink includes a reference to Oaxaca. Because it's a signal to the consumer that the drink contains a particular spirit, in this case vodka. Vodka was a latecomer to the American market, and so for a while there it had novelty value to point out its use in a cocktail. In terms of the precursor drinks, the Black Russian is the most well known. From the late 1950s on, it was a staple crop in the land of cocktails. It was invented by Gustav Topps, or Jack Falvey, or Kahlua's marketing team depending on who was telling the story. In some sense, they all might have been correct, because no doubt multiple people put this drink together without copying off their neighbor's homework. After all, it's only a two ingredient cocktail. But it took the marketing might of Kahlua to make it a known entity. Kahlua had been around since the 1930s, but in 1953 the rights were purchased by Jules Berman, who aggressively started marketing it to Americans. The Black Russian was the signature Kahlua cocktail for years. And even though Kahlua's marketing team most likely came up with the drink just as they claimed, the drink certainly had precedent. In the early 1900s, prior to the Russian Revolution, there were some drinks that popped up here and there called the Russian, sometimes even with vodka. But in the 1930s and 40s, after Prohibition and the first Red Scare helped to shoo away those drinks, another drink called the Russian sprang up. This one was a little more widespread. It was a combination of creme de cacao, vodka, and gin. And in a couple instances in the 1940s, the Russian dropped the gin, and it was just creme de cacao and vodka. The drink's essentially a chocolatey aperitif. However, if it was made with white creme de cacao, which would be a clear liquid, the entire drink would be clear. And if you were an enterprising young company trying to break into a new market, you might want to start with something familiar. If you swapped out cacao for your coffee liqueur, you'd be able to stay in the ballpark flavor-wise. But you'd probably want to modify the name to reflect the change, and the new color. And who knows, it may have been something like that. Kahlua's explanation for the name Black Russian was certainly a head-scratcher. In any case, another modification of the drink The Russian was the Russian Bear, which appeared in the 1961 edition of the old Mr. Boston Bartender's Guide. It took the formula of gin, vodka, and creme de cacao and swapped out the gin for cream. 
Flavor-wise, the Russian bear is really close to the white Russian. And it got even closer in 1963 when it appeared under the moniker, the white Russian bear. Another popular drink that was in the neighborhood of the white Russian was the Alexander. It's a drink that dates back to 1917, made with gin, creme de cacao, and sweet cream, as opposed to sour cream. And in 1946, the Alexander was remixed and renamed Alexander the Great. Gin was swapped out for vodka, and the creme de cacao was split with coffee liqueur. This one is so, so close. But then again, the Alexander the Great cocktail never exactly caught on. However, the Alexander was a favorite template for bartenders and brands to revisit. Drinks like the Between Sheets and the Brunette used the well-known formula to plug in some different spirits. So in the mid-1960s, when the White Russian started showing up in print, the formula and flavor profile were familiar ones. The drink appeared in March 1965 in an ad for Southern Comfort's coffee liqueur called Southern Coffee. It seemed to be acknowledging Kahlua's Black Russian and taking it a step further. Coffee Southern continued to push the drink throughout the decade, and it gained some popularity, at least in the marketing world. Despite some folks not getting the memo, Smirnoff started integrating the drink into their marketing campaigns as well. And shortly thereafter, Kahlua did the same. But by the late 70s, early 80s, the White Russian needed no introduction. And in the early 90s, around the time of our first conflict with Saddam and the Iraqis, the White Russian was darn near the most popular drink for its particular time and place. Then in the mid-2000s, around the time of our second conflict with Saddam and the Iraqis, it got another cultural booster shot with The Big Lebowski. The movie was released in 1998, but it took another four or five years to find an audience. And with it, the White Russian was introduced to another generation. Incidentally, the real cultural divide between old millennials and young millennials isn't whether or not they were born after the internet, but rather if their introduction to drinking was a White Claw or a White Russian. The main character, Jeff Lebowski, the dude, or duder, or El Duderino if you're not into the whole brevity thing, was modeled after the Cohen's indie film distributor friend, Jeff Dowd, a guy who spent the late 70s drinking his fair share of White Russians, or as the dude liked to refer to them, Caucasians. Kind of an odd term for this drink, and one that seems to have emerged from this movie. Of course, in America, it's most commonly thought of as a generic term for white people. But it originated from some 18th century German race scientist who was trying to lump everyone in the world into a few categories. The term was coined to refer to some people he wanted to classify as white who lived in the Caucasus Mountains, which at the time were a southern outpost of the Russian Empire. In other words, it was originally a term for white Russians. In terms of the vodka, feel free to use your favorite. No need to limit it to just Russian brands. A while ago, I was turned on to Black Cow. It's an English vodka, but one that seems tailor-made for white Russians, as its spirit is distilled not from potatoes or grain, but from milk. As for the coffee liqueur, I'm using Mr. Black, a rich, dark Australian coffee liqueur. Mr. Black sources its beans from a handful of farms around the world. They roast them all individually, and they use them to create their own blend, which is then cold brewed into an extremely concentrated base. They then dilute that base with their proprietary vodka and some cane sugar over the course of nine days. A lot goes into it, and it shows, particularly in drinks. The coffee has those chocolatey notes you come to expect from cold brew, but with a little espresso bite on the finish. And in a creamy drink like this one, it comes across like an adult milkshake with just the right amount of familiarity to make it approachable and the right amount of complexity to make it enjoyable. For the cream, there are a handful of ways to go. You can make it with milk, half and half, heavy cream, or even coconut cream, which will work if you're, wait, who the f are the Knutsons? Most vintage recipes call for it to be made with cream, as in heavy whipping cream. But then again, some call for it to be made with milk. And the dude almost exclusively made his with half and half. And you can even use coconut cream if you're not into the whole dairy thing. It still makes a hell of a Caucasian. We're gonna make this drink two ways. One like the dude, and one like the other Lebowski, the millionaire. It all depends on your mood or what kind of white Russian you're going for. Exiled ruling class? Or something to sip on in between Tai Chi and listening to tapes of old bowling matches? We're gonna do the millionaire first. 
Admittedly, this is my favorite of the two, and one I have to thank Eric Castro for encouraging me to try. This one's served up, fancy, like a show dog with papers. Because you want to float the cream on top, milk or half and half won't cut it. It has to be heavy whipping cream or full fat coconut cream. Let's start by chilling our glass. Fill it with ice and set it aside. Then lightly whip your heavy cream or your unsweetened coconut cream. It'll work either way. You're trying to aerate the cream, but you're not trying to make a pie topping, so no need to go overboard. Just enough to thicken it and get it to float on top of the drink. If you don't have a milk frothing pitcher, just whisk it in a measuring cup. And if you don't have an electric whisk, put your back into it. Next, we're gonna measure an ounce and a half of vodka. Add that to the mixing glass. Measure an ounce of coffee liqueur. Add that to the mixing glass. Add ice and give it a quick stir to chill it down and give it a little dilution. Then strain that into your chilled glass. Next, take your lightly whipped cream or coconut cream and slowly pour it over a bar spoon to float it on top of the drink. And you're just gonna eyeball it. You're aiming for about a finger of cream on top. You wanna keep the layers separated and drink the boozy, chocolatey coffee through a thick layer of cream. It gives the drink an amazing mouthfeel, helps round off the edges, and creates a great complexity. Look at that. The decadence is ludicrous. Lord, you can imagine where it goes from here. Now let's make it the other way. If you're like the dude and know your ratios by heart, no one's gonna stop you from free pouring. But we're gonna make a Caucasian like Gary would. The way we're gonna make it is the more balanced version, and one that's more crowd blazing. But if you wanna make it with equal parts using Mr. Black, you'll get this amazing Amaro-like espresso finish on the drink. Start by filling your glass with ice. Next, measure an ounce and a half of vodka. Add that to your glass. Measure an ounce of coffee liqueur. Add that to your glass. Measure an ounce and a half of half and half and add that to your glass. Then give everything a quick stir to chill it down and give it some dilution. And there it is. The what have you. The White Russian. Enjoy. Special shout out to brother Seamus Martin Dudorov for digging up some great info on the Russian cocktail. You can buy Mr. Black directly through their website. And for those of you in the US and UK, make sure to use the discount code DISTINGUISH10 for 10% off your order. You can find out more about Mr. Black and follow their channel here. Also, check out some more videos from your favorite distinguished video artist, and be sure to subscribe. For links, more info, and the printed recipe, check out the description below.